I'm sure before visiting Prague, you scroll through Instagram and save some of these picture-perfect spots, hoping to visit them and take the same photos here. Well, it might not be that easy. In this video, we're gonna show you the most popular Instagram spots in town and see how difficult or easy it is to take photos there. And our first location is right here on the Old Town Square, one of the most popular rooftop terraces in town. It's called Uprince. Let's go. Are you ready to pay a lot of money? For a coffee. We have checked the prices of this restaurant in advance and have concluded that we can only afford a coffee and a dessert. If you come here for drinks, they will not sit you at the tables, instead you will be brought to an Instagram enthusiast section with bar stools. So right now we are waiting for our moment. Uh, to shine. There's sort of a line here. There are not a lot of people, but you know, if you're here and you're paying 200 crowns for a cake and 100 crowns for a coffee, you want to take your time with taking the best shots possible, which is what these girls over there are doing. So we're not going to disturb them. We're just going to wait for our turn. As expected, everything was twice more expensive than okay. it is normally. Drinks. If you will come here for a drink and you get a martini, it is 220 crowns. Cosmopolitan, 220 as well. So pretty much all the drinks are 220 crowns, which in like cheap, cheap places is around 100. Coffee and cake were tasty, so no complaints. Now it is time to get what we came here for. Beautiful photos from the rooftop. After waiting for about 15 minutes, I have stood up and claimed my place in the line. The photos turned out to be nice, but I wish there were no boards with hashtags here. They look a bit live, laugh, love. Now let's find out how much those pictures cost us. So, we just visited Uprince and you're probably wondering how much was our bill. It ended up to be 524 crowns, but it should have been cheaper. This is one of the places where they include uh, the tip of 15% without really asking you. Well, they did tell us uh, when we were paying that uh, it will be there and said, we hope it's okay. And we kind of said yes, uh, because what, would we start an argument <laughs> with them there? Probably not. So I imagine a lot of people don't argue and they just pay those 15%. This is what you get uh, if you want to take a lot of photos. The prices are a bit higher and there is the compulsory tip. Anyway, guys, let's go to our next stop. While it is impossible to take photos for free at Uprince, this other photo spot is still considering how to monetize on its popularity. Our next Instagram spot is the Idiom Sculpture, located in Municipal Library. It has been standing here for around 20 years, and for 23 years and 9 months out of that time, nobody cared about it, up until it blew up on TikTok. So now, when you come here, you see a crowd of people lining up to take videos of the uh, bottomless book well, or infinity book well. That's how they started to call it on TikTok, but it is not the name, just so you know. And once upon a time, a hidden gem, Idiom now has a longer line than there is in the Prague castle. We also heard that the library is now considering uh, implementing some new measures of uh, controlling the crowds here, because I imagine it is quite annoying when you are studying here uh, to hear all of that. Oh my God, can you take a picture of me? Yeah, just like this, just like show how the infinity book well is there. Oh yeah, just like that. Yes, yes, yes. So this is the reality of this popular Instagram spot. And you know what? I'm not gonna be lining up here to take a photo. Screw that. I will go and get some lunch. This little square has two more Instagram locations. One of them is in the city hall. Not a day goes by without somebody on the internet asking about Paternoster elevators, otherwise known as the Eastern European elevators of death. First of all, they're not Eastern European. I would say just European. And second of all, death is a stretch. 
I would say damage or trouble. Anyway, if you don't know what Paternoster elevator is, it is an old type of an elevator that goes in a loop. We have made a video about three of those elevators before, you can check it out here. And while we were making it, the most popular elevator among tourists, which is located here in the city hall, was still working. Well, not anymore. Now it is out of order because tourists were going there and they did something and managed to damage the elevator. Plus, they were also disturbing the workers of the city hall and uh, creating too much noise. So they decided to close this one. I have actually taken Paternoster elevators many times before, not for fun though, just because I was running errands in those office buildings where they are, and they're quite sturdy. So I cannot imagine what those tourists did to the elevator here to break it. The third photo spot is hiding behind behind the doors of Clementinum, the famous Clementinum library. So guys, we just did a tour in Clementinum and as our impression is still fresh, we thought we will share it with you. We had to do the tour first thing in the morning today. Normally, the ticket to Clementinum is 300 crowns, but if you do the tour in the first hour of their opening, you will get 50% discount, which we thought was great because the ticket normally costs 300 crowns and it's uh, not a lot of money, but it's certainly on the pricier side. There are cheaper museums where you can go to in Prague and spend their four hours instead of 45 minutes. So we signed up for the tour at 9.45. It was 150 crowns per person, which is a bargain. And this is how it went. The tour includes the guided tour of Clementinum. You cannot go there on their own. Our guide was lovely. She first told us about the history of Clementinum and then we went upstairs. And spoiler alert, you will have to climb a lot of stairs. Well, not a lot, but that's pretty much all you will be doing there. You will be going upstairs. And then she brought us to the library. Now the twist is that you can't actually go inside of the library. They do open the door and allow you to step in for around uh, half a meter. Uh, they turn on the light for 10 minutes and for 10 minutes you can take photos, uh, film videos, but you can't walk around there. This is of course because the library is very historical. It has a lot of priceless volumes. They just cannot risk it with the humidity levels and sunlight and all of that stuff. In 10 minutes of hanging out near the doors of the library, we did not manage to film an Instagram worthy video as the there were always people standing in a way. We don't mind, but for some of you it might be an issue. Also, it is very dark inside of the library and we were not able to see any details. So for 10 minutes we were there taking photos and then we went upstairs to the astronomical tower where you can see a lovely view of Prague city center. You can actually go around the whole tower so you will see both the Prague castle site and the old town site. So yeah, this was a 45 minutes long tour. We were kind of talking about it, comparing it to the Strahov library because uh, of course this one is also pretty and people usually are choosing where they will go to Strahov or to Clementino. Strahov library is definitely cheaper but if you do this with a discount in the first hour of their opening it will be roughly the same price but in Strahov nobody will be limiting you time-wise so you can stand there in the doorstep and take photos and videos as well. Uh, I know that in Strahov it is possible to go with a guided tour and walk around in the library it's difficult to arrange but it is possible. Here it's not possible at all. So I guess if I were you, a tourist, I would be picking a Strahov library. But this was also very nice and our guide was lovely. Now let's take a walk across the river to our next spot. This Instagram location is a perfect example that we humans are still powerless against nature. Basically, this is where a lot of photographers would bring their clients and a lot of tourists would come just on their own to take the photos, but they don't anymore. As you can see, it's quite empty here. And uh, the reason for that is that something is missing from here. The swans. Swans are a huge part of Prague's fauna. Tourists love them, especially they love feeding them with bread for photos. And swans are known for hating just about everyone on the planet Earth, so they would just hiss on them. So tourists would come here and feed the swans with bread, and then COVID happened and they stopped coming here, and swans left and never came back. They're just now sort of scattered along the riverbank, but they don't hang out here in such huge numbers anymore. So when you come here to take photos, it kind of looks very sad. You can just see pigeons, uh, some ducks here and there, and nutrias, which look like rats, which is not a good look for the Instagram photo, right? So let's go somewhere else. 
The view from here is still very pretty, but swans would make it even better. Our next popular Instagram spot is just around the corner and it is a bit misleading. People know it as the narrowest street in Prague, but it's actually not a street, more of a passage that leads from the street to the restaurant. It is very narrow, two people can't uh, pass each other at once so you have to push the button and wait for the traffic light to go on. We were very lucky now because we already filmed what we wanted to film and now uh, there is a little crowd of people waiting to take their turns with uh, taking photos there. But just so you know sometimes there is an actual line especially if uh, there is a school group uh, passing by so it can happen that you will have to wait uh, to take photos there. Okay guys, we are now at our second to last location and it's a very famous one. It's the rotating head of Franz Kafka by David Czerny, Czech sculptor. And this location really doesn't have any downsides except one. If you want to see the head actually rotating, you have to be here every hour sharp because it rotates only first minutes of the hour. Right now it is 2.20, so we have bad luck because <laughs> we would have to wait for 40 minutes and we are not gonna do that but if you want to see the head actually rotating you have to plan your schedule and be here i would say a couple of minutes uh, before the hour sharp because who wants to wait 40 minutes on your vacation so we will put this time lapse here that we shot a while ago so you can see how it looks like when the head is rotating and we will go to our last spot So guys, we are at our last location and of course it is the dancing house. How could we not have included this place in our list of Prague Instagram spots? This place really became popular a couple years ago and I think I have witnessed how. Let me share. I used to live on that street over there, so this tram stop over here would be my regular tram stop. So while I would be waiting for the tram, I would be observing kind of what's going on here and once I saw a couple who was taking a photo and the girl was posing and then she figured out that if she raises her leg and the, her boyfriend takes a photo under a certain angle it will make it look like she's bending the dancing house so they took that photo and next day I saw it on Instagram recommended with hundreds of thousands of likes after that they really kicked off the trend it's kind of like Prague version of the Tower of Pisa you know no the one here except here people are not like holding the the dancing house they're trying to bend it i actually don't like this location it is not because of the dancing house but because it is quite trashy right now these people are not here but there is a group of beggars that uh, clean the windows of the cars at the traffic light or juggle and beg for money and they usually hang out here because it's a busy crossroad so there's a lot of uh, profit for them here i guess uh and the second reason why i don't like this place is because in this house over here they they have a lot of short-term rentals and uh, often stack parties come here and once it happened uh, not to me but to Vatsov uh, when he brought his uh, group here on a, a free walking tour uh, he was explaining the dancing house standing next to this house when a pair of shorts landed next to his group they all looked up and saw a naked guy just displaying himself in an open window how nice so I think that's fair information for you to know. Don't expect this to be like a romantic, quiet, tranquil place. Right now, as you can see, there are quite a lot of people, but trust me, it is nothing. Usually there are many, many more. Well, that was more difficult than I thought it would be. We actually couldn't take the exact shot I envisioned. I don't know, I just don't care enough, I guess, uh, to spend more time trying. This is how mine looked like. I don't know why is it so popular. It is really not that attractive when you do that. But uh, maybe I'm just not the right person for the Instagram shot like that. Anyway, guys, we will finish our video here. As you can see, in most of these Instagram spots, you have a crowd of people who will be doing the same exact thing that you 
you are. Some of the Instagram spots are not free. You have to pay to go there. Overall, after the whole day of visiting Instagram locations in Prague, I realized that if you only concentrate on seeing these places, it creates a weird impression of the city. Prague seemed like a pretty facade, with people lining up to take pictures everywhere, but with nothing much behind it. Definitely not how I am used to seeing it. Now you have a better idea of how Instagram spots in Prague look like, so we'll leave it up to you to decide if you want to visit them or not. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in our next one. Bye!